Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. It's been a week since I last recorded this, so we're going to play that famous game. It's called Trying to Remember What Voices I Use. So, here we go. On the canteen's porch there stood the unfriendly girl who'd hit me on the back earlier. At her sight, my joking mood vanished in the blink of an eye. Really, now is not the best time to pull this guy's leg, even though he's quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out what's what here, or at least where am I, or who am I, or what am I? Sometimes I think these questions through a little too hard. Here, over there, that's Elisa Dvaskinia. Um, I really need to rehearse these names, don't I? Dvaskinia? Correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably am wrong, but I think that's probably as close as I'm going to get without a voice coach. Her, over there, that's Alisa Dvarcheskvaya. Be cautious around her. He was speaking in a whisper. Dva means two in Russian. The whole nickname sounds exactly like 2CH in Russian. A reference to the late 2CH.ru anonymous image board. Hmm, I wonder why. Don't ever risk calling her Dvarche. She doesn't like that. What did you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. In a blink of an eye, Alyssa jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. I did the brave thing and hid behind Electronic. Alright, you'll manage from here onwards. Electronic took to his heels. Let's take the beating. Alyssa, running past, stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you... later. Deal with me? What did I do wrong? I added a false guilty smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and went on chasing Electronic. Looks like we got away lightly there. Ellipsis. Looks like I'll have to kill my time alone waiting for the dinner. I decided to go east. At least in that direction. At least in the direction where east would have been in my world. Soon after, I found myself near a football pitch. A game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and in teen years, I was not a bad player myself and even thought of going professional, but a few injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of an uncertain chance in the game. Kids of different ages were running at the pitch. I could see a boy of about 10 and a girl of about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's Oliana. All right, she plays football. What's so surprising? She seems a restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but still, she noticed me. Hey, you. Ilana shouted, very quietly. Want to play? I did not know what to answer. On one hand, it's no big deal running around for ten minutes. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be a final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig and playing barefoot and without jeans would simply be unethical. Maybe another time, right? I shouted a response and turned round and walked back. I was followed by Ileana's screams about my pants, or about me being a patsy, or something like that. The evening was falling. It made a massive thud making me feel tired and empty after a day wasted for no real purpose. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench and threw an exhausted sigh. That too landed with a clang. I'd better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easy to search for answers when you're not hungry. They do give food to people here, right? 
You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. E.g., I feel hungry now and I care less about where I am or what's happening to me. Could great people be affected by this? In which case, how did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it does not really matter which mechanism I do serve as a gear, society, matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. My thoughts were interrupted by the bells chiming from a loudspeaker on a light pole. The heavy pole had fallen over. That must be the dinner call, which is probably a good thing, because I'm about to eat it. I headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing, now I knew where it was. Olga Dmitrina was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked at her closely. I looked at her rather closely. Then I looked at her face, as if I was expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but at last came closer. Simeon, what are you do waiting for? Come in already. You should never leave there, either. Guess nothing bad can happen if I come with her. Hopefully she'll walk in front. My stomach backed me up there. Other bits liked the idea of her walking in front. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like... a canteen. I had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. I had a ch uh, 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 but, right, next sentence. This one was exactly the same, just maybe a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the walls and on the floor, unsophisticated tableware. Yeah, on the unsophisticated tableware on the floor. Let me read that one again. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the walls and on the floor. Unsophisticated tableware with occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. Semyon, wait a moment. We'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Dvacheska, hold it on right there. Olga Betvina shouted at Alyssa, who was passing by. What? What's up with your clothes? Why are you wearing them? Anything wrong with it? Indeed. Her attire looked somewhat provocative. Fortunately, I had learned how to scoop my eyeballs back up off the floor. Get your uniform nice and neat. Right now. All right, all right. Alyssa got her shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. So, where can we find you a place to sit? There weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there to Ilana. You'll never come back. Um, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine. The food's already on the table, too. I had no choice but to accept. Of course, there was a probability that the cutlets were poisoned with curare, the mashed potatoes generously seasoned with arsenic, and the glass filled with excellent antifreeze instead of compote. Ah, uh, if Percule Pyro can spot arsenic, so can you. In common Russian language, Cotleta, cutlet is minced meat, fried or baked in the shape of a ball or a cylinder, close to American patties. I think that would be quite disgusting, close to American patties. That would just be rude. Compote is a drink made by boiling fresh or dried fruit in a large amount of water. Compote in French, yes. Compote in English, too. But it all looks so tasty, I had no chance to resist. Hey, what do you want? I replied rather rudely to Ilana, who was sitting next to me. Why didn't you play football with us? Because of my clothes, said I, pointing to the source of the problem. All right, then. Eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. The cutlet was missing from the plate. Only she could do it. No, more precisely, none but a Galana could do it. 
Give me back my cutlet. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. And it can cost you a cutlass if you're careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Attempt to take the cutlet. I look at her menacingly and is about to reach out my hand. See? I don't have it, she said with a mouthful. And indeed, Ileana's plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlets. Take it easy. We'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it in a much easier way. About a minute later, Ulana returned and handed me a plate with a smoking hot cutler on it. I put out the fire quickly. He is one for the starving. Thanks. It was all I could say. Actually, it came out more. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... What the? Some bug! No, not a bug. An insect. It's got legs and it's... wriggling. The plate fell onto the floor and broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on the leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child, but when those creepy crawlies appear on my plate, that's just way too much. You little... Yolanda seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door laughing as if she'd just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. I dashed to her. I grabbed her and crushed her emotionally to my bosom. No, no, sorry, that's later in the game. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart. I felt like I would catch this little girl easily. Does somebody want to call the authorities at this point? We ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran into the forest path. I started to gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. Yulana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. It simply can't. I was standing there trying to catch my breath again. The evening was falling. For a second time, it seems to like doing that. Looks like I'm lost. Perhaps I'll find another blonde in a bikini to help me find the right way. It's not a it's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. Better get back to camp. However, I had no clue which way to go whatsoever. Well, got to choose at random. Does like his ellipses is this guy. I strayed for some time in the forest and even thought of crying for help, but finally I saw the camp's fence behind the trees. It's pretty mean with a rapier. Everything falls back into place. The bus is gone, I mumbled quietly. On one hand, there was nothing strange about it. The bus couldn't stay there forever. On the other hand, it meant that there was someone driving, because buses do not drive themselves. Or do they? This world seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and... A surreal one. Certainly the driver could have just been off for a snack and I left too soon and that's why. In any case, this is not a place for me. Whenever that dr bus drives itself or not it was probably an important question, but it was a much more important how I got here at all. And where this here was. The fields and the woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, alien world. However, absolutely not frightening at the same time. Either my self-preservation instinct had decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me into such a... with so much of their carefree normality that I was sometimes simply forgetting that it had happened to me just a couple of hours ago. 
although I probably had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I wanted to have... I wanted to just break from it all, and only after that would I continue looking for answers ready and reloaded. Ooh. However, that would be some time later. And what about now? Can I let myself relax? It got completely dark, and in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about to head back when someone came silently from behind. Just a little moan. I can't remember what voice I used to hear. Uh, what should we do? Uh, I know. Hello, what are you doing here so late? Yeah, that was the one. Ellipsis. Don't you ellipsis me, you get. It was Slavia standing before me. I was so surprised that I got a seizure. Which is a terrible thing to happen in tight dreams. Take it from me. So, you haven't caught Ulana yet, have you? She smiled. I nodded disappointedly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever have. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found better use for energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed, I'd completely forgot about hunger, but after those words of her, my stomach drew my attention to it to itself by giving a traitorous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What is the campaign? Canteen Slavin? It's all right. I have keys. The keys? The keys? Yeah, yeah, I have keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well, I'm something like a camp leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. Please walk in front. It was an offer you can't refuse. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, I should warn my, warn my roommates that I'm going to be late. She's so punctual herself that she must be worrying otherwise. You go on to the canteen and I'll come in a minute, all right? All right. I really did not expect that at such a late hour someone would be there besides me and that somebody was apparently hopelessly trying to open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked onto the porch. The lock picker turned out to be Alyssa. I should probably have kept off and waited. She looked at me for intently for a while, then said, Don't just stand there, give me a hand or something. Meaning? Help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns with kefir. The dinner wasn't enough. Hmm. Is it really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself, though? Oriana didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine. Slavia will come now, and... What? I guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off, then. And you'll pay for this. You owe me two already, you and your little dog. Having said that, Alyssa disappeared into the night. And what was the first one for? Slavia didn't keep me waiting too long. Is everything fine? Yeah, why are you asking? I fact you were curled in a ball and shivering and mumbling to yourself when I got here. No reason, it's nothing. It was better if I didn't tell her about Alyssa. Everything's fine. I said that and instantly heard a trace of di dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go then? As for Slavia, she seemed not to have noticed anything. Or at least, she was pretending she didn't. We entered the canteen. Nobody turned the music off. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savioress. Dinner was simple, a few buns and a glass of kefir. No wonder, I bet Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that was far better than, my most, than most of my unusual diets. Slavia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. 
Is there something on my face? No, it's just... She smiled. So, how do you like your first day in the camp? Well, I don't really know. It's silly to ask someone who's suddenly found them himself in a different reality whether he liked the food in the campaign, the camp leader, or the assigned hut. It's all right, you'll soon get used, because you're never going to leave. Slavia stared at the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things, but as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least she wants me to think that she doesn't know. Or she wants me to think that I'm thinking that she thinks that she doesn't know. This could get complex. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. I did so with this club. Do you think so? She asked without, in without any interest. Yeah, this place is so... I wanted to say retro, but managed to hold it back. After all, it was retro for me, but what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. If the term life was applicable here at all. So how? She looked at me closely. As if something important depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely? Yeah, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good. Well, wrong voice. It's very good that you think so. Why? Because you'll never leave. Well, not everybody likes it here. And what about you? Me? No, the other you, you fool. Yes. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. The conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to guess. And you're worried yourself. Really? Why? Well, when someone is chewing... Well, when someone is chewing so intensely... This voice is running away from me today for some reason. I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't force myself to be more careful with this girl. But why exactly her? With any local inhabitant. Every one of them looks completely normal to me precisely normal. So normal it sent chills down my spine and to the marrow. Normal, not like a neighbor human with the power to drill in with the power drill in one hand and the subwoofer in the other. Okay. Not like a passenger human you often meet on the subway or public transport. Not like a co-worker human next table in an open plan office. Most co-workers aren't human. Not like even like a, a friend human who only differs from other humans in his constant insistence. All of them look normal as I would expect them to be with their own downsides but without any superpowers. And Slavia was also... cute. I glanced at her stealthily. Then I got back up off the table, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you the camp, but ran off my feet. There, over there. I uh, didn't miss anything while being on my own, I guess. Wrong voice. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? She smiled so hard that I had to cast my eyes down in confusion. Well, how could I know? It's the first day I'm here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, this campaign, the football field. And what about the beach? Just from afar. You should really go there, or let's do it together, or we can go to the beach. Yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness seemed to scare me, but then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be, and this world looks strange just for me, but for them it is... native. Maybe I got thrown into the past. Yes, this would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. Slavia smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Will you find a way to Olga Detrimida by yourself? 
can't get those right name right. I'm so sorry to every Russian listener. I do apologize. Uh, of course, but why should I go there? She'll settle you to someone. Oh, she's probably digging the grave right now, funny enough. What for? Probably this question seems stupid because Slavia burst into good laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense. Let's go to your place. Fine, I'll go then. Good night. Night. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. And my 20 minute episode is running up to 25 minutes. I think we're going to stop there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And I, well, okay, this has been a really bad episode for me, my reading skills, which is quite worrying, but never mind. I hope this wasn't too offensive to anybody who actually speaks Russian or has a Russian surname I've mangled. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this game, though, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving reading it. So uh, I'm going to stop there. Thank you very much, guys. I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you and good night. Thank <laughs> you.